Hello, this is Brad Dyke, reaching out to you to talk about something you you don't start thinking about until you start buying hard drives for your NASes and your interfaces. Um, how do you organize your disks, right? It's a good question, because when you've got these arrays of HP or Dell or NetApp or... or um, you know the the three part platform arrays uh, and so on you notice that if you're not careful you could just put disks in in an unorganized fashion and you'll sit there scratching your head saying why isn't it moving fast well the principal reason is as you begin to combine disks like you see here there's a lot here as well as over here they work in the principle of capacity. Spec, interface, and bandwidth. So, as the older generations are here, and they can run 6G or 12, the disks themselves physically become a potential slowing of the group of disks which you have, and Basically, the end result is you might have 15 high-performance disks and one 5400 RPM disk uh, versus 10,000 RPMs or 7200 RPM. You can't figure out, well, why isn't it moving? Well, it's kind of simple. You see, when these disk arrays do their jobs, they are designed and should be prepped in combinations of similar disk. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to get specialized. No, you just have to meet the generalized breakout of the disk. Secondly, groupings. Groupings are important because these controllers work in groups of six or eight on the, each of their buses. So this one's got 20, uh, 25 drives on it, and so we know that those are broken out by, by two channels each. So we have our setup here. And we have two pathway channels doing this chain, so we know that if anything in here is not consistently the same, you're going to be going as fast as the slowest drive in your combination. Now, I won't lie to you, I kind of cheated. Because I'm not a fan of just laying discs in boxes and just letting them sit. I'd rather put them in chassis down here like this NL400 series. For my three and a half, there are 56 hard drives in that one chassis. And there are 12 here that are all three and a half inch in size. And then I've got my two and a half inch, and I'm slowly transitioning to two and a half inch, only using my uh, free NAS array by powering it up periodically to do massive archiving and archiving only, nothing more. Um, there's something going on with that board, so I have to work with that more. But the point is that my three and a halfs are down here but I even have them segmented apart my 7200s are different from my 5400s and anything I've got performance wise caching I group them together in discs so they I get the best performance out of them so the big mistake that people do here is they'll put one terabyte NetApp discs in and 600 NetApp discs in and they'll parse them like a 10 like six tens I'm sorry, six one terabytes here, six six hundreds, and the rest are all one terabyte drives. Because they're trying to get the best out of their capacity. The only problem is they cross the buses. You see, the NetApp platform has three channels for 24 drives. Eight, eight, and eight. So it's got to be eight of one class disk, eight of one class disk, eight of one class disk. But then you say, well, how do I store my temp drives? Well, okay, that's a great question. Matter of fact, it's an important question because if you look here, not everything appears to be what it looks like. For instance, on this platform, these drives are flush, but these are not. And why? Because they're empty. That's right. And over here, These disks aren't, they're slotted closed, so they're not able to get in and become functional. You can use them 
to block out the airflow on the chassis so that the drives stay properly cooled. And at the same point in time, in some cases, you just don't have anything. Now, why do I do? Why do I suggest that? Well, because if you look down here, you see I've done that. I've broken these out, and these are 600s and 450s. Don't want the 450s playing with the 600s. Don't want these guys spun up because they're giving me some issues uh, just yet, but I want the airflow to be in place. So it's a great place to store discs. Other platforms are not so nice. For instance, let me show you another one. Okay, so up here, you're going to see my three and a halfs. There's 12 here. And they're populated and they're functional. I'm going to get rid of this unit. If anybody's interested in Isolon, let me know. And then down here, my other Isolon, which is more historical than of use. It is my free NAS for now. It also has 56 3.5 inch drives in it as well. And basically it is a functional array, fully operational in capacity, but powered off. Because I don't use them all the time. And that's just a waste of energy. So with this being the case, the end result is basically you have some empty caddies, some sta self-standing discs that are still out and about, and a few that you're probably running diagnostic modes, but this should be about the pile you should ever have. Don't let the discs just set around. They need and do have a purpose, and that will help you get where you want to be Plus, it helps drive you to get the right kind of discs that you like to want to work with. And with that being the case, you'll eventually get to these fully populated arrays that are very busy doing their jobs. Um, and you also find out to be surprisingly efficient. So, the last thing about this is, and I thought I would bring this up, is that these units are very impressive because of their space. They really do. They do really do reduce their footprints nicely. Over here, I have a, a solid fire node that I'm building. But when you look at the front of this, wow! Look at all that disc capacity. You know that's that's what you're talking about. You know when you've got basically this many drives in the game uh, for a single node, you've got capacity. Down here, I've also got a uh, 385 Gen. Uh, Five, no gen 6 it's not doing so good I'm gonna get rid of it but uh, anyways I mean it's it's doing good it's just I need f more firepower than the 12 cores of that platform so if anybody's interested in that particular chassis let me know it works excellently and I think that's going to be it for tonight's thing and I'll let you go